Hey everyone, in this quick video, I'm going to show you how to make an enchantment effect. This is super easy. All we need to do is mess around inside the shader editor with a few nodes and that's going to be it. So the first thing I did is I spawned the iron sword from the MC prep, but you can use any other rig such as the box capes of this pack or anything. But if you want to learn how to spawn the items from MC prep, it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is install MC prep and you can go to edit preferences, add-ons and then search for MC prep and then make sure it's enabled. And now if I click on N, bring out the sidebar, and if I go to MC Prep, I can scroll down, and then I can open the item spawner, and then I can click on Reload Assets, which I already did, and then if I search for Iron Sword, I can place the Iron Sword, or you can use the Diamond or any other sword you want. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use the Iron Sword. Now I'm going to close this, I'm going to click on N to bring out the sidebar, and first thing we need to do is go inside the shader editor, because that's where we're going to be changing all the nodes and stuff. So I'm going to click on the shading tab, and then here we might have another panels which we're not going to need. So if I hover my mouse over here on this left side, click on left click and drag this on the left side, I can get rid of this menu. And then we're going to have the viewport and we're going to have the shader editor. So first thing I recommend is click on numpad 7 to go to top view. Or you can use these gizmos to access top view if you don't have a numpad. And then after that we're going to be mess around, messing around with the shader editor. So first thing I can recommend you to do is have a space here so if i left click i'm gonna deselect all the nodes if i left click and drag this on the left side i can drag this on the left side and maybe have a space to have a better look at these nodes and these are the default nodes that the mc prep sword provides and first thing we need to do is we're not going to need the diffuse effect so if i left click this node i can click on x and it's going to delete or you can click on delete and it's also going to delete so if you click on x or the delete key it's going to do both so, first thing we need to do is maybe create more space and then I'm going to press on Shift A and the Shift A as you know is create in Blender. So if I click on search, I can search for different nodes. First thing I need is add shader. So if I type add and then shader. So make sure you select the add shader and then left click to release it and place it somewhere over here. Another thing I need to do is click on Shift A and then search for the noise texture. Which is going to be pretty much the main character of these nodes because it's going to do all the cool enchanting stuff. Now place the noise texture somewhere over here below the image texture. Now first thing we need to do is take the color. If I left click on this color icon or color dot, I can left click and then drag this in front of the add shader. Now take the shader of the add shader and then plug this underneath the mix shader. Now another thing we want to do is take the color of the noise texture, take the color and plug it below the add shader shader so the image texture goes on the top and then noise texture goes on the bottom now another thing we need to do is we're gonna need to use the node wrangler add-on so if you don't have it enabled it's pretty easy to do it comes it comes pre-installed with blender so if you click on edit preferences and then go to add-ons search for node wrangler make sure the node wrangler add-on is enabled once you have the node wrangler enabled make sure you left click and select the noise texture and if I click on Control T, uh, I'm going to create the two new nodes. So first one, that one I have is the texture coordinate. The second one I have is the mapping. Uh, what I like to do is instead of generate, I like to use object. It does make too much difference, but it looks nicer in the end. So I'm going to left click, select this object and then connect it to the vector. Now, another thing we need to do is be sharp between the noise texture and the add shader. We're going to add the color ramp node. So if I go somewhere over here if I hover my mouse over here and then click on shift a and then search for color it's going to give me the color ramp underneath it or you can type color ramp entirely to filter it out if I left click I'm going to create this node and it's, what I need to do is if I hover the color ramp over the line between noise texture and add shader you can see the line becomes bright if I left click to release it it's going to jump between these two and it's already going to be connected pretty nicely now, as you see, the sword looks all white, which we don't want. We know we're going to create this cool enchanted effect. And from now on, it's going to be pretty easy to do. So first thing we need to do is play around with the color ramp. So if I take this black line, left click and drag it on the left side, you can see that we're going to create this cool enchanted effect. Now, don't go all the way to the right side. Maybe choose a sweet spot like somewhere or here. And then you can see we have a pretty cool progress already. I can press on numpad period or F to zoom it in. And then if I left click this and drag this, I can maybe drag it slightly here. If I do it all the way here, it's not going to look nice. 
So maybe drag this white value somewhere over here. And another cool thing you can do is if you want to go outside of Minecraft and go for like cool fantasy effect, if you select this white value and then click here, you can change colors. For example, you can change this to green color and we're going to have this cool green enchanted effect. You can change this to blue. You can create some cool sci-fi effects. Uh, I'm going to leave it probably at blue. Uh, the default one is white, which is going to look more vanilla Minecraft. But if you want to go crazy, you can do some blue or green effects or red effects. So I'm probably going to leave this somewhere between blue and green. Somewhere over here for this tutorial, just to make it fun. And the last thing, almost the last thing we need to do is mess around with the noise texture and then keyframe the noise texture. So the reason we created the mapping and texture coordinate is to have more control in the future. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to touch these settings. You can change the location and you can change the rotation values. But for this tutorial, it's not going to be imported. So what I need to do is first change the noise texture from 3D to 4D. And then what I can do is if you leave this at default settings, you should be fine. But still, you can take this scale, for example, make it more, make it less. If you make it less, it's going to look closer to Minecraft. Now, you can also crank up the detail to somewhere like 7 if you want. You can change the roughness, but I recommend to leave the roughness at default. You can change these two settings as well. I can't spell this one. I don't know what it is. Uh, so you can change this as well if you want, but don't go too crazy with it because it's going to create some weird effects. And you can change the distortion, but again, don't go crazy with the distortion effect. If you leave this at default, you should be fine, but be sure to mess around with these. Maybe you can get some cool effects. Now, the last thing I need to do is keyframe the W value, because if I left click the W value and drag it on the left or right side, you can see that it creates the enchantment moving effect. So let's keyframe that. So first I'm going to click this and set this to zero. And to keyframe this is pretty easy. So inside the shader editor, I'm going to bring my mouse over to the left side on the left corner, somewhere over here until you see this plus icon appear. If I click on this plus icon, left click and drag it up, I'm going to create a new menu. If I click on the shader editor icon, I can switch just timeline pretty easily. So once I click on this, select timeline, and then we're going to be greeted with a timeline. So first thing I need to do is change the start value to zero. That's optional, but I do that. So change this to zero with using these arrows. Then I'm going to create the, or I'm going to click on the auto keyframing, which is not necessary, but you can do that. I'm going to switch the, I'm going to switch to king and select location and rotation. Or maybe let's do scale as well, just in case. And then I, if I go in my output folder, you can see that I'm using 30 FPS. Hey, you can use 30 FPS or any other FPS you want. If you click on this, you have different options. So once I'm on frame zero, I can maybe drag the timeline down. And what I need to do is hover over the W value, right click, and then press on insert keyframe. And that's going to insert the keyframe, but we're not going to see it. But if I left click and select the noise texture, you can see that I have created two new keyframes. Now, if I go forward, for example, I can go forward about 400 frames and then I can drag this up to somewhere like seven or you can drag this up to anywhere you want. So if I drag this up to a value of seven or 7.3 or 7.1 and if I go to frame zero and if I play it, you can see that I have this cool enchantment effect. But this is Bezier. That's why it started up slow and then sped up in the middle. So what I need to do is once I have two of my keyframes selected, if you don't have them selected, you can press on A, hover over your timeline and press on A to select all the keyframes. Then press on T and set this to linear. Now if I press this to linear, if I set this to linear, the animation is going to be more constant. And I'm going to have this cool enchanted effect. Again, you can mess around with the color, you can mess around with the noise texture. But the last thing I need to do, if I want my animation to go on forever. So I'm gonna, for example, if I drag this up and then I go on frame over frame 400, it's going to stop. So last thing I need to do is select this timeline and then switch this to graph editor. Graph editor is right behind the right beneath the timeline. So switch this to graph editor and then scroll up, scroll out. And don't worry if you don't know how to use graph editor. All we need to do here is press on A to select all the keyframes. These are basically keyframes and then press on shift E, click on shift E and then set this to linear extrapolation. Now, if I set this to linear extrapolation, the animation is, go, is gonna go on forever, no matter what's my end frame or start frame. So if I again go back to timeline to be more comfortable for you guys, if I click on this timeline, if I play back, we can see that the animation is playing forever. If I go over frame 400, it's gonna play on forever. So yeah, this is how you can easily create an enchantment effect. All you need to do is have these dots, and I'm sure there are gonna be different effects as well, different methods to do that. 
but this is the method I use and I'm planning to use in my future animations as well. So hopefully you like this video. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like it. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe because I make a lot of Minecraft animation tutorials weekly, once or twice per week. And also, if you want to learn how you can animate faster and how to save time while animating, then you can check out this video right here. And I will see you there. Thank you for watching.